I I think maybe we're gonna put, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, we're gonna put Dick Evans on because uh, I can't see Bob. He'll be here a little bit later. Uh, Dick is a longtime activist with Normal. He's a lawyer from Northampton, and he has an interesting bill before the state legislature this year. Good afternoon. Anybody here? Anybody listening? All right. All right. That's reassuring. Look, we've got a lot of important things to say today. We've got a lot of things to celebrate, but we've also got a lot of work to do. First, let's, let's give a big cheer to the people at the CRC. Not only this year's group of leaders, Alex and Heather, but 18 generations of leadership in the CRC that have put this event on. We're very grateful to them. They've kept the issue alive. They have endured snowstorms. They have endured ridicule. They have ignored being ignored. They have endured it, rather. And we owe them a huge debt of gratitude. So let's hear a big cheer for the folks at the CRC and Terry Franklin. Woo! You know, we've come together here every year for, for 18 years and in places like this all around the country. We have all know what's brought us together is the knowledge is sooner or later our country's going to come to its senses with regard to marijuana. Well, folks, I've got good news for you. Later has become sooner. We're getting there. <coughs> Lots of things have happened. The big news, of course, question two, last fall. We now have the wind at our back. A majority, a huge landslide of America, of Massachusetts voters went to the polls and declared what they really thought of the marijuana prohibition laws, and they said, enough, enough, enough arrest, and let's decriminalize. Now, this is somebody who we need to thank for a question two, who in my opinion has not gotten enough gratitude. And that's the guy that wrote the check that financed question two. You know who that was? George Soros, the international financier. He gets a lot of grief in the international and the national press, but we should be very grateful to him. If you ever have an opportunity, in fact, you have one right now, let's say thank you to George Soros. Right now, one, two, three. Thank you, George Soros. Now, because of question two is huge victory, the whole landscape has changed. We can say things in public now that just couldn't be said before. <clears throat> we can talk about, about the futility of arresting people for the purpose of eradicating marijuana. We can talk about the fact that marijuana is not the threat to public health and safety as the, the drug warriors have claimed for years. We can talk about the fact that prohibition doesn't keep marijuana from children. Mar Prohibition doesn't close the so-called gate, the gateway. But most importantly, we, of course, the victory of question two has opened the door to serious discussion about the wisdom and efficacy of prohibition. My friends, the big news is that the debate has begun and the burden of, of proof has shifted. We're no longer on the defense. The defenders of prohibition on the, are on the defense. Let me show you, just talk about how mainstream this debate has become. You probably didn't see this morning's Wall Street Journal. Major headlines, whether to legalize or not. The Wall Street Journal. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> the debate has begun. <laughs> now something else has happened. I don't know if you've noticed, but we're in a bit of an economic crisis these days. And states and local governments and the federal government, folks are starting to get the message that prohibition is a luxury we can no longer afford. And there's also something else that people are starting to look at, and that's the prospect of tax revenue from a regulated tax market in cannabis. Now, I, I did something this year I hadn't done for 28 years, and that is I filed a, a bill in the state legislature under the right of petition, a, a bill to regulate and tax the cannabis industry in Massachusetts. It would not only end full prohibition, but also impose a tax on, on, on the cannabis and, and I think raise a lot of money. Now, 
Not a single legislator has endorsed this bill. Understandably, no one wants to, to uh, have, no one has that kind of courage. But at least we can be grateful here that the two representatives from Amherst, Ellen Story and the State Rep, Rep, House of Representatives, and uh, Stan Rosenberg, the State Senator from Amherst, both filed the bill at my request. And by doing so, they didn't come out exactly in support of legalization, but they did come out in support of a debate about legalization. And that is a huge step forward for all of us. The debate has begun. <clears throat> There's a lot for everybody here to do to support these bills. Network, network, network. Go to a website I've put up. Go to Normal's website. Go to MassCan's website. Go to CRC's website. Go to a new, new website called www.cantaxreg.com. Stands for Cannabis Taxation and Regulation. Everything you need to know about the subject is on that site. Spread the word about it. Network, network. When we get notice that the bill has come up for the committee hearings, <clears throat> that could be later this year, it could be next year, we don't know when yet. But when we get that notice that the committee hearing's been scheduled, we'll need to fill the State House with people. I want to see all of you people in the State House when the bill comes up, but more importantly, and here's a big request. How many of you can bring your parents with you? Yeah. All right, bring your parents with you yeah. <laughs> to the state house. And finally, remember, remember this. A lot of people out there are still afraid of marijuana. They don't know the truth about it. They've been propagandized. They believe the propaganda they've been hearing for the last two or three generations. It's our obligation demonstrate not only that we we are demanding freedom when it comes to cannabis but also that we are willing to exercise responsibility when it comes to cannabis remember this is a great party this is a great opportunity to enjoy cannabis but there are but this is but there are plenty of times when cannabis should not be used be cognizant of that let the rest of the world know that we recognize that the cannabis has its place. This is it. But, but, but uh, we know we all agree that cannabis isn't for children. And you shouldn't drive a car in impaired condition. Be be uh, uh, cognizant of the set and setting. Uh, resist abuse, of course, and rec and and, and uh, respect the rights of others. <clears throat> Let me just remind you of something Mahatma Gandhi said. When a new idea comes along, first they ignore you. Then they ridicule you, then they oppose you, then you win. Well, my friends, we've been ignored and those days are over. As a matter of fact, we're not even getting too much ridicule these days. With, with luck, they'll oppose us and then we'll win. So have a great party today. Support the CRC, support the cause. Go to that website. There's work for you to do. Have a great day. Here,